I'll just have a cup of coffee. Beer it is. No, I said coffee. Beer. Coffee. Beer. Beer. C O B A. <gasps> what? No. No. What? Oh. <gasps> no. <gasps> what? You went into the attic? <gasps> I'm very disappointed and terrified. Why don't you bring this potato? That's pretty bad. Mom, you're always trying to give me potatoes. What is it with you? I just think they're neat. Why do birds suddenly appear over there, over here? Eight spices? Oh, some must be doubles. Oregano? What the hell? Oh no, not Lenny! Not Lenny! Kids, turn off the TV. I have some bad news about Lenny. Not Lenny! Live from the epicenter of independent cinema, it's Film Stucks, with your host, Jake S. Weissman. Tonight's guest, co-founders of Into the Void Films and Those Who Remain podcast, Nathan Waters and K.R. Brooks. With me, the original Dr. Emmett Brown, Jack Quint. Let's start the show! What's happening, film dorks? Jake S. Weissman here. Very, very, very excited to be here. Uh, we have Nate Waters and K.R. Brooks from Into the Void Films, and uh, we are going to be chatting with them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so the news this week, Black Widow comes in and ushers in a brand new age of mega money. Uh, we found out that the opening show was only half full, and the money that they cleaned up from that opening weekend is just unbelievable. Uh, so we'll probably be doing a Film Stuff's Light pretty soon about that, because Disney talks about how, you know, we'll go back to normal when it's time to go back to normal. But uh, the money does not say such things. Jack, oh, Jack. And here I am. Oh, there you are. Hello. How you doing, buddy? Good. I get to be on the show earlier than usual. I was like, oh, that's all the news. <laughs> that's all the news. That's all there is. Black yeah. Widow's out. We've been waiting for Black Widow to come out, you know? It's here. Well, it's that's unbelievable. Great. It made uh, $80 million just domestically, $80 million uh, in theaters, and then $60 million for Disney+. Plus. That sounds like a lot. That's $60 million in pocket, man. That's that's no small number. No. So No. So now every single movie from here on out has to clear that, basically. Well, we were just wondering, you know, think about the next, like, Spider-Man movie or what are the next movies that'll do $100 million in the theater anyway? And then what does that mean when they're getting dropped on Disney Plus as well? Uh, it's just incredible the amount of money that's about to be made, dude. They need to make more out of merchandising, too. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we are so lucky. Lion has joined us for the first time in a long time. Check it out. So I get to have Rollo Fish and Lion here. Let me zoom in on that so that we can see Lion. That's Lion. Um, Hopefully he'll be able to stay, but if he has to leave, then I will be standing up and walking to the door. So and if, if you want to see more of Lion, then what you can do is make sure that you are subscribed to Film Stuff's Live by going to jellyrollchicago.com. Make sure that you click the like, share, and subscribe button. Subscribe to us on Twitch, on Facebook, on YouTube. It is important to do this so that you know when Jake does the Film Stuff's Light updates on Facebook and when he announces the wonderful guests that we have. But we want you to make sure that you are watching on YouTube, especially we want you to visit our guests website so that you can see their videos in the full HD. And when you watch on YouTube, you get to see it in a higher quality as well, which is really important when we do our retrospective of film stuff so far. Mm -hmm. And which if you want to help the show then oh. you can. Oh, no, not that one. The other one. I well, I mean, you can you can go to any of it yeah, if you want. You can. You can go. I there. get Venmo and Vimeo mixed up all the time. I want it's people to watch my Vimeo. stuff and send me money. Yes. So send us money. Go to Venmo. Go to Vimeo. But you can send us money to Venmo. <laughs> yeah, and you can watch uh, you can watch Scrapers in full for free on on Vimeo. So that's that's also good. 
Um, look, look at all this great content we're providing you with. <laughs> I just want to make an announcement that I am trying my very best to update the web, uh, the YouTube page every week on Saturday. So I will have a new video out about screenwriting on Saturday. I just put out uh, an interview that I did with Lucas Guy Taylor, where we talk about going to see Black Widow and what it was like for the, you know, going back to the theater. Cause for a year I've been talking about going back to the theater and um, I wanted to kind of have an inside man there. And I did get an inside man and it was actually a very interesting conversation. That's on my YouTube. I should probably put it on my Vimeo as well. But you can go to jellyrollchicago.com and click on all the links there and they will be there. That's the hub for real. That's uh, check out jellyrollchicago.com and you can uh, you can find all fine things Jelly Roll Chicago. Uh, Nate, uh, Nate, I want to tell you about my friend Nate. Jack. I want to hear about your friend Nate. I want to hear about <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. Why? It be, well, because you were talking about the film last week and it scared the shit out of me. I mean, I'm, just hearing you talk about it scared the shit out of me. I, didn't, I haven't even seen it yet. I'm really it sounded, excited. It sounded amazing and like it would freak the shit out of me. So I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to see it. Well, I think we'll, we'll all look through our fingies <laughs> yeah, and, that's and how try I'm gonna and watch, watch everything. It. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to start the show with a little sizzle reel, and then we're going to watch a couple of their shorts. And then uh, we have film stuff so far coming up really soon. And they have a uh, great, great short that we're going to be uh, showing there. So let's get them on. Uh, how do I know these cats? I do know uh, KR through Nate. How do I know Nate? Nate's my dude from the movie theater. Another dude from the movie theater. I've been collecting people from the movie theater ever since, because for some reason it just attracted some of the most creative, wonderful people that I know. Um, uh, Nate and I worked together for m most of my time there. He was hired pretty quick after, after I was hired, um, did most of the things that I did, including like a late night janitor. Um, he, he and I worked pretty much every Saturday shift for a couple of years. He also has the very, very uh, famed uh, Black Panther uh, medal that uh, I the, respect the prestigious oh, so award. Much. It's pretty prestigious. If anyone tells me they have it, um, I, you know, it, it starts our, our relationship at a certain level. I think, you know, it shows uh, that you've been to a certain place. You've earned your salt. We're all, uh, yeah, the true veterans. Um, Kevin, I met through Nate. Um, and he is, Nate is the writer director and Kevin is the cinematographer. And I got to meet him when I finally got on set. And Nate is the most, or, oh my God, this is going to be rough. We have so <laughs> my mother right now. I'm sorry. Like Jack, Lion, Nate, Kevin, KR. I'll figure this out. I'll Gigi's get it together. going to be for <laughs> I'll get it together. I promise. Um, Kevin is a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful cinematographer. They work together so much. Um, he's also, you're not going to be able to get to see, but he's like, uh, he's an epic looking dude too, Kevin. If you get to stand next to him, he's, uh, he's, he's a beast. Um, so it's a lot of fun hanging out with the two of them. And I love working with both of them. Uh, what do you say we bring them on? That's a great idea. And I, I will see you after idea. the show or Thanks, later Jack. in the show. <laughs> Hey boys. Hello. How's it going? Thank you so, Hello. so much for coming on. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. <laughs> it's really, a treat. Really appreciate it. We're going to be talking some horror. We'll talk some money. We'll talk uh, all that good stuff. But I was thinking before we go, uh, Jack, let's watch that sizzle reel.
sizzle indeed. Oh man, sizzling. <laughs> bring bring I, back a lot of memories. <laughs> as, uh, for me as well, uh, I've had the pleasure of working on a couple of your sets. Um, you guys are unbelievably prolific. I have to oh. say, it's um, pretty amazing because I've been working with Nate. Nate, how many years did we work together? Like five years or something like that. Yeah, yeah about and five years. You made. I don't know if I have enough fingers on my two hands for as many shorts as you guys made in the time that we. <laughs> Uh, did that. I was wondering if you guys could speak to your prolificity. Prolific <laughs> I don't know about prolific at all. Kev, do you want to go first, man? <laughs> this all started in like, what, 2013 about. And um, yeah. Nate, Nate and I worked on a film together. It was my first film outside of Columbia College. Um, so it was like a project that actually wasn't for a school project. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I, we always tell this story, but I think it's a good one to tell about how Nate and I actually met. We um, were in a production meeting for this film, for this short film. And it was actually, it wasn't a horror film, it was a comedy. Um, <laughs> so, which was interesting. Um, but anyway, uh, we're sitting at the table and we're going around and, and you know, introducing ourselves and and we're just like, you know, what's your favorite movie and stuff? And, and Nate said, it gets to Nate and he goes, The Shining. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I look over to me, or he looks over to me, or he's I'm like, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah. So, so the bond was formed right then and there. Yeah, it was like very much like stepbrothers. Like, do you want to go do karate in the garage? Like, right. we're friends now. Yep. Yep. Kind of thing. It, so, yeah. I, mean, I find that like most of my, like long lasting friendships in life kind of start that way that I just think like, they get, you know, uh, kind of formed by a common interest. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Oh, you like horror movies. That's like one of the things I'm super passionate about. And then it kind of just builds from there. And then, you know, you just start building trust by working together and leaning on each other and stuff like that. And, uh, the same can be said with you too, Jake. It's like, I met you at the, at the theater and you went to Columbia as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think yeah, that's one of the Columbia first things. Boys. Yep. I had just <laughs> left Columbia. And uh, like, I think a lot of people that are in the film industry specifically probably gravitate towards theaters because it, it, it allows you to be like tangentially involved in the business in some way, yeah. at least on the back end, I guess, you know? Well, um, we and, learn stuff that's like, I mean, I don't mean to interrupt, but you learn that having feet on the ground, you learn things that mm -hmm. you don't even realize you need to know that, that we know oh, things sure. working with our feet on the ground that the people producing the films would never mm -hmm. necessarily know unless they talk to the people of like the neighborhood or something like that. Yeah. So oh, yeah, for sure. it does end up working eventually. I'm sorry. Yeah. Totally. Oh no, it's, it's cool. <laughs> for what um, it's worth. But I, like, I think that time was super valuable in that sense because we got to watch a lot of free movies. We got to see how people reacted to movies. And then uh, also, you know, selfishly, once in a while, I'd get to program some of my own short films before some of the Halloween movies in October. <laughs> sure. And I got to like sit there nervously clutched with anxiety watching people react to my shit who weren't my friends or my mom or whatever. And that was a really good experience too. So, um, but then I like uh, with you, I like, I think we immediately just, started buddying around and talking about writing, which is something that we're both super into and uh, went from there. But with, with caveat, it was totally one of those things where it's like, I like the shining me too. And then I, um, I remember being at like a lunch <laughs> once on that shoot. And uh, we started talking about pan's labyrinth and you were just like, you got super excited and we're like, we should do something kind of like pan's labyrinth if we can, or as much as we can afford to do. And well, yeah, uh, we, that was we, our we first short. We were both into um, like dark fairy tales and whatnot. And so we're like, yeah, that, that's cool. It'd be awesome to do something like that. We're like, you know what? We also, we like musicals too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're like, what if we combine the two? And that's how our first yeah. film started. It didn't end Super that ambitious. way. That's so yeah, funny. Like, we started writing yeah. demos and recording some stuff and uh, we yeah, uh, got music and everything. Yep. And for like the teaser trailer that we did for that short to try to raise some money, we uh, went into like a recording studio to lay down the the vocals. And I was just like, oh, this is like a lot of work to produce an album <laughs> as well as doing your, your first <laughs> short. So we're just like, let's maybe cut it back a little bit. And that mm -hmm. allowed us to kind of, you know, uh, concentrate, I guess, all of our efforts into just making a short film. But even then, it's super ambitious. The thing's like almost a half hour long, and it's basically us just shooting for the moon, right? Which is our longest you, short. It's our longest what was short, the short to date. 
Void. What was it? Void. Void, which is where we get into the void. Uh, we just kind of rode with that ever since, which is kind of, mm-hmm. and now it's been abbreviated as like ITV. But yeah, um, yeah it's basically just our take on uh, kind of Grimm's Brothers fairy tale sort of vibe, where it's like a older sister has to go into the woods in search of her her baby sister, and she kind of encounters all these mythological like fairy tale creatures along the way. And we were trying to do all kinds of crazy stuff with like reverse photography, like with the vines, like an evil dead. Oh, and really? yeah, we're yeah. like, and we're using green screen and ADR. And I was able, um, I had a friend that did post sound at Columbia. Uh, so she was able to get us in there and mix on the sound stages and do ADR with like people that were like sound majors. And it was, it was really nice. Um, and um, I was, I was really surprised how empty those sound stages are. I hope they filled up in the year since we've left because there's nobody right. in there. When I was there. <laughs> uh, were you pleased with how that turned out or what, like, it yeah. sounds like you guys, and we were talking a little bit about this on the tech check, me and Kevin were, um, where you, you kind of, you start by doing the most epic kind of project you can think about. And then the next one, you kind of pare it down and you're like, well, mm-hmm. actually this is what worked about it. And you pare it down and you pare it down until it's like, actually this thing is twice as good and four times, you know, less long and four times as you know easier to make kind of a thing uh what kind of things did you learn from that first one that you then kind of pared down uh for the next project i guess with everything like (laughs) for me it's like just uh uh, avoid cliches the more and more i go Mm because that first one i was like oh this is just like because it's a fairy tale it's full of just like archetypes so um the the farther along we've we've gone i've tried to do stuff that uh avoids cliche as much as I can, but it's hard because it's like, you know, every story is basically some version of another story that's been told before it. Horror um, is a hard genre, man. Yeah, anyway, especially, like, especially in that oh, space yeah. to do something yeah. like, uh, that's unique. <clears throat> Actually, uh, uh, one of my friends on Facebook was just saying, uh, he's like, like nothing's original anymore. Everything's been done before. And I was like, well, yeah, like every story kind of boils back to like, you know, hero's journey. Right. And then uh, Uh even uh, before that, like John Carpenter has this great quote where he says, there's only two types of stories. There's a story about the monster outside. And then there's, there's the story about the monster inside. And so like at a fundamental kind of, you know, molecular level, all stories kind of grow from that. So it's hard. It's hard to reinvent the wheel every time. And all you can kind of do is try to do little twists on things. So that would be my big takeaway is to try to, um, just to try to like learn from the things that maybe we were a little too ambitious about sure. uh, trying to kind of keep the crew smaller um, and just sure. definitely focus what you're trying to say more, you know, how big was that crew? It's probably, you remember, it's pretty big. Really? <laughs> yeah. like so 30 we, people or something like that. No, not quite. Like, 12, but it right? was, like maybe 12. Yeah. That's pretty big. Like 12 yeah. and 15. Yeah, and, we and, now our, and now our crews are five. Yeah, yeah when we did the lobby three. one, I yeah. think like the lobby one was us plus two people and an actor or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. it's and, cool yeah. working with a with a big crew, but um when it's on your dime, it is difficult, you know. <laughs> and like, I, I love everyone and uh, that we brought out and stuff, but I remember specifically one time I had just like an envelope full of money that was for gas and everyone was leaving. I just remember being like, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, just like an empty envelope and just being like, fuck, that was money that I like worked at the bookstore for. But that's what you that's what you do when you want to make movies. You know, you right you, you burn your money. It's not burning your money. I'm just being well for the record. Off. I mean, I I worked with you enough to know that you took all of your tip money from every ship that we ever worked together <laughs> and used for it for five years and, and, and used it for all of these different shorts that you were that you ended up doing. So you put your uh money where your mouth is for sure. Uh, what about you, Kev? That's yeah. Uh, Void is really special to me. Like, not only was it our first film together, and it kind of like we went off and and just kept making films, but I met my wife on that set. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was awesome, and it's a cool story because you know I feel like a lot, and and you know it, it's not a bad thing, but a lot of people just you know like oh like nowadays it's like oh I met online, which is fine. Yeah. But like you know I, I'm like well. You know, it was it. It, it was, it's just a cool story. Yeah. Um, so you know, and and Nate and I work on everything together, and it's what I learned from that film was like keep things simple <laughs> because 
when you try and try and go like crazy with things, you know, especially for your first film, like a musical and like we drove uh, three and a half hours to my grandparents was uh, cabin in Wisconsin because it was like the oh, only man. place we can think to to shoot, which was fine. But like people were taking the train out. We were picking people up and uh -huh. it was it was a lot. And I mean, it was a fantastic week. Uh, it was two weekends of shooting, and, and I kind of used the in between as vacation. So it sure. was it was oh, it was yeah. a lot of fun. I had some some friends come up, and I had a buddy who just got out of the Marines, and he had he knew nothing about film, but he had nothing to do. So he's like, "Hey, I'm like, would you want to come and and help? A, I don't know, just hang out or whatever." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Yeah, you know, I could like read a book or whatever while you guys are shooting and stuff." Dude, he oh, was no. like one of the most helpful people on set. He was awesome. used to in pyrotechnics and stuff. He was, he was, he was, the bonfire. He was throwing like lighter <laughs> fluid onto it for us and making sure nobody got hurt. Somebody got a tick on them and he pulled it off with tweezers. Like he was just like <laughs> the resident kind of boy yeah. scout, making sure everyone sure. was taken care of. It was awesome. That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I do, I'm going to want to show. <laughs> I want to show this that short. Asshole for the there, there he is. There he is. <laughs> is that him? It's that asshole. Most <laughs> useful um, asshole. <laughs> Let's go through these comments and questions, and then we'll run the short, Jack. So, really like the music. Bones wants to know: Did you compose it? This is during the sizzle reel. I Ooh, did. That was Nate. Yeah. That was Nate. Yep. Uh, we were coming up with something uh, for the second season of our podcast, and. Uh, Kevin was like, it's going to be like synth wave. And he sent, he sent me this awesome art that he's working on. So basically for like two hours, I just listened to a bunch of synth wave while I was typing at work right. and tried to let it kind of just percolate into the subconscious. And then when I got off, I just kind of came up with the first little melody I came up with. And that was that. So. On your phone? It uh, no, would actually, be yeah, on, no. It would always be on the counter. I, I, I did it originally. Nate, yeah, on Nate is ridiculous, band. man. He will be on set <laughs> on his phone right composing music i'm like how the hell do you do that <laughs> like, we're doing the? at the moment yeah, yeah. and he's like hey, i listen. remember one time you tried to show me how to do it. i'm like uh and i just can't i, yeah. I have no idea it's not one well, of, it's not in my skill set <laughs> that's rad that's uh how cool is it to be able to just have original music you don't have to deal with any of that yeah it's awesome i mean for me it's like thank you mrs Bly from uh band for making me learn how to play the piano because i just wanted to learn how to play drums and she was like no you have to understand music theory and i was like okay and how to read <laughs> sheet music and stuff and it's paid off you know obviously down the road so thank you that's great if she's out there listening <laughs> not a question but a comment indeed Dream boats. gorgeous <laughs> gorgeous uh don't we all my cat's name is Lion. This is What's Lion, up, everybody. My boy. This is uh, the orange of my eye. <laughs> is oh my god! I'm so glad. I always want him to hang out, and um, he he hasn't hung out in so long that Bones had enough time to make a stuffed animal from scratch <laughs> <laughs> to sit where Lion sits. So uh, we're glad that he's here for the interview right now. Um, all right, boys. Thank you so much. Uh, let's roll that beautiful bean footage of let's all go to the lobby and then talk about Ooh. it. Actually, can you do me a huge favor? Can I get out of here a little early? I know, I'm sorry. I just, I gotta run this errand before I go to this party I'm supposed to go to. Okay. Really? Yep, get out of here when you're finished. Oh, seriously, thank you so much. Hey, you should come by when you're done. Thanks, I'll think about it. Yeah, all right, see you later. Good night.
Chocolate bars and the candy, so let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby. That is so much fun to watch, guys. Uh, I love that one. <laughs> that's that's fun because for anyone who doesn't know, that's the movie theater. That yep. is our our eponymous movie theater. That's the theater that I won't shut up about. Oh uh, yeah, I know, right, mom? Um, my favorite part of that short is when <laughs> um, uh, you get scared up top and then still manages to go back to theater four to continue speaking, <laughs> even though yeah. someone talked to him in the booth. Um, yeah. Just well, if, if, not a chance. Just never would yeah, happen. Right. For us, I would have been out of there. But his character, he's like, if so, if they open tomorrow and a customer complains about popcorn, I'm, do I'm done. <laughs> they had to take care of it. They're going to be walking the theaters first thing. And if they yeah. the GM or, oh, no. That was one of those ones where I remember everyone asking me on the set, why is he even here anymore? Why does he just leave? Right. I was like, because he has to get grabbed. He has to get who grabbed. Is who is going to stay there after Because that? reasons. Movie reasons. My favorite, my favorite part of that film is the very beginning where we have our wonderful actors, uh, Connor Clark and Sheila O'Connor, and she's asking, oh, can I cut out early? And he's like, oh, just just, just go when you finish up. And she just straight up books Please. it. She's like, all right. That's yeah. out. actually the most realistic part of the yeah, entire that was yeah, probably. true events. It's like, yeah, you can finish Please. up when you're, when you're done. Okay, I'm done. Yep. <laughs> See ya. At least we'll look at the theaters one more time. <laughs> uh it was fun because you guys definitely um use that it's uh what am i trying to say it's a really cool it ties back to everything because as independent filmmakers you're using what you got you're using the things that you can find you know nate worked at the theater for a pretty long time before he uh you know I don't feel, would you be comfortable, Nate, asking to use the theater for filming if you hadn't been working there for like, no, you that know? was, that was one that you got to wait to burn up for a couple of years and right. establish some trust, you know, with people. Cause it's like, I was a manager too and had closed up and done the janitor thing. So it's like, you know, um, I think like you, like, uh, you like we're definitely there to make sure we didn't do anything wrong or anything or like break anything. Yeah. But, um, and also you were the Happily. AD. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Like I, I feel like that's something that I would have been kind of uncomfortable. Like your second week on a job to be like, Oh, by the way, can you trust me to, cause we were literally there from like, <laughs> like, weren't we there from like midnight to like seven in the morning or something like the we sun was up and close, close to sun up. Yeah. yeah there so, were people at Starbucks yeah. in the morning. It was kind of surreal. Yeah, like I, coming up, yeah. <laughs> it reminded me of like being in like middle school or high school and pulling all nighters and you go out and get like McDonald's in the morning and everyone's on yeah. a completely different uh, schedule than you. Uh, that was, that was an interesting one too because it was a quiet shoot because there were only like five of us so it was real quiet um and people were like sleeping or whatever but also as i recall and i don't know if this is just me patting myself on the back for being an ad i just remember us all talking like 
there's no way this could go faster. Like yeah. we were all just kind of working at, um, it's more me patting your guys' back because you guys just knew what was up and it just kind of like kept going and going and going. And I've never, mm-hmm. it's so rare to work on a shoot that's so like quiet and efficient, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, that well, was a great, that's a great short. Uh, if, I, if I may uh, compliment you for a second as an AD, and I know that's something that you're not like always trying to do, but like you had this awesome saying that you would tell me all the time and it was just like you're paying for this <laughs> which is like the, it was, it was just like it'll, it's like yeah all right let's keep going and like that's, that's really all you need to tell the to, like tell me and i'm just like okay yeah let's go it's, um there's a lot of it's some of my favorite love of the game sets that i've been on because <laughs> it was we did i i don't know if i did more than two um but i the first one i did with grant was grant Gagnon. Uh, mm-hmm. with you guys and that's the short that i want to show next week yeah. uh that i think yeah. everyone's gonna really love because we went to a theater after it closed uh, a stage theater mm-hmm. and uh do you oh, nate do you want to tell us a little bit about the short yeah just sure. just tell so, us about grand Guignol. Yeah. yeah so uh grand Guignol is a theater uh that they had i think i think it was in Paris and it was just basically sort of like the theater of the macabre right where it's like they would act out like murders and stuff on stage and a lot of people didn't know if it was real or fake and uh, I'm a huge fan of Hostel and so uh-huh. I was like oh let's kind of merge those two and do something about a guy in the audience at one of these shows seeing a guy get killed on stage and for some reason he's kind of just drawn to this woman that kills the guy on stage and he wants to be a part of the show and he goes backstage and everything and um, he's like uh you know, he basically wants to be a part of the show and gets lured in as the next uh, victim. So uh, that's basically the genesis of it. And I was working with uh, Connor, who's in basically everything we do as well (laughs) uh, as Sheila and Ricky. We got to mention Ricky. Uh, uh, And he, well, we worked at Raven theater at the time and we were building the sets there and that's where we shot it. And we just, you know, got in on a weekend, I think, and knocked it out. We got a bunch of extras who are our friends from, all walks of life. Some yeah. people even worked at the theater, which I thought was awesome that they're coming out to help. And we just rocked it out. It was party. Kev, what was, mm-hmm. uh, what are your memories of that? Sorry, I think I glitched out. Kev, what were what are your memories of that? A little bit, but I, I heard you. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, the, the, uh, shooting in that space was awesome. Um, we also had, uh, like pretty much two cinematographers, two camera operators on that one, which made Uh things go by a lot faster. I don't think we would have been able to finish that entire film in the, we did it in one night, right? Yeah. Uh, Which which is, it's a nine minute film. So, you know, we we knocked it out. Um, But Jeremy Hull was the other camera camera operator and he did a fantastic job and, you know, we worked together really well. Um, We love Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It was, it was, it's a lot of fun. Um, I I love the atmosphere of that film, and I love the the theater goers and their in their masks and whatnot. So, and we got to mention our puppet that was wonderfully built for us for the short. I, oh, yeah. I did, did we ever name the puppet? I don't know if we did. Uh, maybe Billy. <laughs> Billy the puppet. I don't know. The puppet. I don't uh, yeah. I don't know. Hillary made that puppet, yeah. right? Hillary kicked ass on that thing, and I think spent way more money on it than I gave her for it. And she was just like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, this one's on me. So I really appreciate that, and I still have it, and Thanks, it's in Jay. perfect condition. <laughs> Nate um, has like a whole collect for every short it, film. It's that all in done. storage. He, yeah, right. He's he's got something. Yep. He's got the axe from Void. He's got yeah. Yep. You, you've got a, quite I, uh, the collection. I just went to the storage unit uh, to get some stuff for the thing that we're doing in a couple of weeks. And I was going through all the different shorts we've shot. It's hilarious. It's like a little uh, museum of death and, and whatever despair. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Aww. Um, nice. Um, oh no, I lost my train of thought boys. Oh, you'll catch it. You know how that goes sometimes. Hey, Paul. <laughs> um, yeah, well, absolutely. let's watch um, Torture and then I'll regain my train of thought. How about that? Oh, for sure. Cool. Sure.
Yeah, what's up, dude? Dude, you want to hear some fucked up shit? I'm kind of in the middle of something. And you remember the last time he called me? He said the exact same thing. Yeah, that shit was rad, though. That was a fucking donkey show, Zane. Like, nobody needs to see that shit. <sighs> Everyone needs to experience a donkey show once in their lives. Come to think of it, don't you have a birthday coming up? I'm hanging up now. No, 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 no. No, no seriously, it's not interspecies erotica or anything like that, but for real, you should check this out. Okay. What is it? Go on tour and put in this address I'm about to send you. And call me right after you look at it. Yeah, I will be sure to call you back just as soon as I'm done looking at whatever crazy, disgusting ass shit you've sent me. Dude, I thought I said call me. Yeah, sorry. Oh my. Oh my. When did you guys make that one? Uh, 2017, right, Kev? It was like right so. before. It, it was right it? around the time that all that clown hysteria was going on, which was like when it, it one came out. So yeah, 2017. <laughs> um, so I remember the question I wanted to ask, and then we'll get back to that. And my, the mm -hmm. question I wanted to ask before was Kevin, and maybe uh, you might have answered this kind of a little before, but how have you tried to have you been trying to change things up visually with each short like how do you try and evolve your visual or what it is you do behind the camera with each short that you do uh, yeah I, I i i try to i think um part of it is gear <laughs> and and i don't want to say that you have to have gear to make a film right because we made void with we rented a, a camera and that uh, we had a tripod and a really, really cheap dolly track. <laughs> like right. that's all we had for, for void. Um, but you know, as you go on, you acquire more <laughs> toys. And um, it, I, I, 
I always get them to, you know, knowing that I want to use it for a like particular purpose. Um, mm -hmm. So I try and build off of what I have. Um, and, you know, I really just try, honestly, to be honest, what I do is if like Nate sends me a script, I will read it and then close my eyes after reading a scene and, and like try and just watch it in my head. Sure. And, and that, like that's really what I do, and um, yeah, I just try and tell the story through the camera, and you know, I think everyone says that, but I, I try to. <laughs> sure. Um, do you have like not influences as much as just like cinematographers that you, I guess, influences? But are there cinematographers that you are like, this is the guy? Like for me, as like uh, an editor and a writer, I'm like, man, Hal Ashby is the guy or John Cassavetes is the guy. Is there anyone uh, camera wise that you feel that way about or is it just? You know, not not really. Um, I, uh, no, cool. <laughs> like I, there's cool. like, no, really like, like really like, I mean, I, there's films that I, that I love and, and yeah. you know, I, 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 I would imagine that if I went back and looked at, you know, some of the films that I really love, then I'd probably see some similarities there, but it's not something that I really pay attention to too much. Word. Um, I'm, I'm a really bad filmmaker in that sense where, <laughs> where I can't like list off a bunch of names and be like, well, this guy, because he did this and you know, no, that's know. fine. I mean, yeah, it's moves I make. I feel like I specifically, Oh, I want this move to be like this guy, but I also, it would be cool to have kind of a, a blanker slate where it's like, I just want to shoot it the way I see it. Thank you. Yeah, um, and that's what, that's what I try to do. That's great. That's uh, super solid. Well, I love that short. I'm not as familiar with torture as uh, some of your other work. Um, I really enjoy that one because it's, it features Nate's dialogue more as well. Um, usually these shorts are very, uh, don't have as much dialogue. I, uh, yeah. and it was nice to, to see that. I think the one that you did with, um, what's the one that you did with Shannon as the writer? Oh, writer's block. Writer's block. Writer's block. That's pretty a little bit more heavy, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Those are the only two. Uh, well, uh, uh, dig my grave, uh, which, uh, Kevin wrote, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, no, we had someone, uh, or was that one written, uh, by a writer from was Reddit? Yeah, that was like, was like a Reddit collaborative. Yeah. yeah, that was like collaborative effort of, of a mm -hmm. few people, but yeah. Yeah, so we've done like maybe three things with like some real intensive dialogue. That's something I want to do more of, which is like why I love writing with you, Jake, because I think your dialogue is awesome. I'm I'm always super uh, uh, not like envious, but like I'm always like I love your dialogue, but like maybe maybe when someday when I grow up, I can write dialogue like that too. <laughs> You're very sweet. Um, <laughs> I, uh, Nate and I have written a, uh, a Hellraiser movie together, which you can yeah. actually read on JellyRollChicago.com mm -hmm. if you want. Um, and I did a couple of uh, YouTube videos where I was trying to do this screenplay ASMR, where like you fall asleep to the sound of my clacking, and it's me oh, yeah. typing out this Hellraiser script. But the funny thing is that I get a lot of views on it because it's connected to there's Hellraiser ASMR voice with like whips and wind. And shit right. that people are like falling. Right. Asleep, I guess falling asleep too. All right. <laughs> that you know what, you know what is interesting too, though, is that in our script we had uh, Lady Pinhead, which yeah. was, which wasn't like new to the series. Like that had been done in some of the comics, but uh, I think that's the route they're going with the new one, which is awesome. It's the much, only route much to go. To the, much to the uh, dismay of a lot of internet fanboys on like <laughs> the comment section. Oh, dare you change it? Oh, but then no. if you don't they, they probably saw your guys' script is what happened. Let <laughs> me tell you something. Our script, not only do I think it's a great Hellraiser script, but it is <laughs> filthy. It's an absolutely filthy script. So I definitely... Um, I went back and read it like, uh, like a year or so ago, and I was just like, oh, damn. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> we went Jesus, hard. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll see how that goes. I'm always curious to see how Hellraiser goes because it's just a, a yeah, curious sure. kind of a franchise. Especially um, if they take that, it to theaters because they've been uh, like kind of delegated to straight to video for like 20 years now. Right, right? and like... Clive Barker kind of keeps threatening to come back, but not wanting to, but then like, yeah, I think he's back now. Me. though. I hope so. Yeah. They um, got him back now. And he had a health scare a couple years ago where he was like in a coma, oh. 
almost oh, died. Dear. And like, he's been, uh, I just listened to an interview with him where he's basically been confined in like one room for the last few years. Oh, even I before had no idea. COVID. Yeah. And he's only now starting to get back on the mend and write and get back into doing the things he was doing before. So it's scary. That would have been, that would have been awful to lose Clyde Barker. I know. Right. Um, here's a question for you. Uh, is it on your YouTube page void yes it is yeah for sure cool so we have to go to the youtube page the into the void youtube page and then mm. we got this comment right here oh. <laughs> yeah it is feeling good do yeah, you have a favorite up, you got a favorite uh, funko oh man what do we have so many we have a really? Steve, I, there's there's more over there i have a whole okay. other <laughs> thing right there I have a, i'm looking at a stephen king one right now like uh, of the man stephen king yeah, yeah. yeah, he has his own Funko. That's fun. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, we we just recently got uh, creature from the Black Lagoon, which nice. is kind of oh, cool. cool. Very um, cool. Yeah, Kev, what's the most big. expensive one you've come across, but haven't like bought for yourself, but have kind of window shopped? Mm, that was the uh, uh, Ash Williams signed by Bruce Campbell. For like five hundred dollars on eBay, that I was going to, that I wanted to buy my wife for her birthday, but I'm like, I can't spend that much money. <laughs> Ridiculous. Not right this second. Yeah, it's pretty cool, but I had to pass on that one. <laughs> uh, Jack, oh Jack, Jack, oh Jack. Where is he? I I don't know what happened to him. There he is. I, there's a fly that is inter fearing with my room so i had oh. to be i had to be like a cat but not like your very docile cat sitting on the couch more like a very frenetic cat that claws at a fly i'm sorry i called you at the literally the worst possible point that i could possibly <laughs> it was like oh with. surely they're not gonna call me in to talk right now <laughs> you should have done it four minutes ago or is God, it gonna yeah. wait four minutes no from fly. now <laughs> Uh, well, I know that you are terribly distracted by this fly. Um, do you have any questions? Of my do you have any questions for Nate? Or we were trying to watch a movie yesterday, and there was a damn fly between the couch. I know. I'm sorry to interrupt the interview, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> there was a fly between the couch and the screen. So and every time I got up three times, and I couldn't find the damn fly when oh, I stood man. up. But it was always there when I sat down. I don't know what was going on. It was pissing me off. It is the absolute the worst. worst. <laughs> yeah, the I worst remember uh, a couple of flies getting into ever. my parents' TV as a kid, and it just ruins it. Like, they just die and get burned in the corner, and you have to have someone come in and like take it all apart. So, like, I can relate. That oh. really puts me in a time period. I feel like like a fly to fly go in burning out the tubes in the yeah, projector. Right? It was like one of those projector flat screens. So it was like one of those massive TVs oh, yeah. that right. had the three yeah. lanterns in the back, and you had to have some guy yeah. come in and calibrate it. So oh, okay. yeah, like 1999 big screen Channel TV. You. <laughs> yep, they still have uh, that TV. That's uh, yeah, that's rad, Jack. Don't what's ever get rid of that. <laughs> what's burning your brain? What's uh, what's on your mind, pal? Oh well, I have a couple of tech-related questions for the both of you. Um, for Kevin, I was wondering, uh, how much do you leave to to getting to play and experiment with new types of gear, especially if you're renting stuff? And then at what point are you like, all right, I've played with this long enough. Now I'm gonna shoot for real. Um. Or, or is it a combination of the two when you're on set? And for Nate, I was wondering, what are you using on your phone to do, to, like, tran uh, sorry, to transcribe music with? Uh, mm -hmm. Because I've found that phone apps for music theory are just not not very user-friendly for the most part. Mm -hmm. oh. Do you want to go uh, first, so, Kevin? Yeah, so uh, we, I started out renting uh, cameras and equipment because I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted. I, you know, I, I had an idea. And um, as I, you know, became more of an adult and less of a child, I made adult money, sort of. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to start buying my stuff. So, you know, it was kind of <laughs> just that. I, 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 you know, fell in love with some, some cameras and started buying them because they weren't, you know, too crazy expensive. And and uh, my goal was to to get to a point where I had enough gear where we can go out at any point in time and shoot a shoot a film. And I'm finally after these, you know, we started in 2014. I'm finally at that point. Congratulations! <laughs> so, well, then to piggyback on that question and that answer, uh, what is some of your favorite gear to work with, and 
Sure. How how does it feel like working with? I mean, this stuff changes just so quickly, and you know, a top it of does. the line camera, it goes, you know, what, four K, and now six K and eight K, and it just it gets. You know, you're always paying a lot more for the new thing, and at what? Yeah, that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I got to a point where um, I wanted to get to four K mm -hmm. because a lot of the stuff we do, we put on YouTube, and usually like thing is you shoot in 4k and for a 1080p render um so so that's what that was the goal um and i bought my latest camera so i fell in love with the black magic cinema line of cameras i think they're super solid um they're inexpensive you know because i'm not going to drop a hundred thousand dollars in an re because i don't have a hundred thousand dollars right so these were why not perfect. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. Right. You're the one with real money. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. You closed the lemonade stand for this. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was the goal. Like, like get to that point. And um, it's funny, the the camera that I have now, they already have I mean they the Black Magic just came out with their twelve K camera. Jeez, so, shit. Okay already. And and a That's year crazy. after I bought mine, I think or maybe a little bit longer than that. They came out with the 6K version, and it's like, uh -huh. well, and and I love it. So I'm like, I don't need any more. I don't need any more Ks. Come on, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm good with where I'm at. K. 4K gets you onto Netflix, I think, because there's like, oh, it does. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So there's like yeah. a list. There's a, Netflix literally has a website where you can like yeah. see the list of cameras that they use. I definitely have um, checked that out just to see because it's like if you're gonna buy your own thing. Who knows? So yeah, uh, yeah so I I've, I've, right now I've got the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and it's on that list. And there's plenty of films on Netflix that have been shot, or at least partially shot, on that, and and big productions. So the, right. my favorite thing about, and not to get too techy about stuff, but my favorite thing about Black Magic is a lot of people compare it to Ari and their color science, and okay. and I'm like, well, if, if it's a cheap Ari, then perfect. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's a cost-effective um, alternative. And yeah. it seems like um, once you pick the body that you like, then you get to spend your money on glass. Like now you yeah. can just get to amass like this lens. lens collection, which is one of my favorite things to do. When yeah. I had a black magic, it was just like, find me every antique kind of like lens. You can, you can get cheap, really beautiful little lenses for 30 bucks. Even sometimes oh, the old yeah. Russian lenses. Oh my yeah, God. Russian, Russian lens. Like a, I have a, the Helios 44 M whatever for it's uh -huh. awesome. Such a cool That's, lens. Scrapers and clean sheets, the 35 millimeter that has kind of like this weird, we called it the eyelash because it's, oh, yeah. that's what that one shot is, is a $30 hmm. like yeah. German or whatever. Yeah. Russian uh, used to be for like CCTV or something with an adapter. It goes right on the black magic and it's like yeah. the coolest effect ever. Mm -hmm. um, Nate, oh. how, your uh, music on the phone. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I just wanted to jump in a little bit with KR oh. with the camera tech stuff. Um, well, f like for me, I remember growing up shooting stuff on like handheld mini DVs, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, from there, actually, like before that, it was like a shoulder mounted like VHS camera that my friend Janet uh uh, gave to me and uh, it had this awesome like snap zoom lens and I would just kind of like discover how to like edit on VHS and then uh, I remember in film school like literally the first thing they have you do is just shoot storyboards with your phone and then oh. they give you a camera and you sort of go from like the Bolex hand cranked news cameras you know and uh, shooting on film and learning how to use the Siconic and exposures and just really like the by the numbers way of doing it. And Kevin mm -hmm. and I say this all the time, and this is awful, but it's totally true. But the the more advanced technology gets, uh, the easier it gets to just kind of shoot, right? So the, the more of that of that sort of old school way of doing things, you kind of lose in the process, and you sort of have to remind yourself of. Like if someone like handed me a Siconic right now and was like, "Get light levels," I would be like, "I have to Google this." <laughs> <laughs> I think you just tap the screen and yeah. why can't, why can't yeah. you just yeah. with, with black magic it's so like there's a, literally a feature on there that makes what is in focus twinkle so like yeah. you always know when you're in focus <laughs> it's the most user friendly thing like there's s log there's all these things to yeah. make sure that you know you're always kind of on your a game even if you may not be good at setting the shutter speed on your camera necessarily you That's, know like there, there's stuff to kind of uh to save your butt i guess 
that's something I felt like when we were shooting scrapers and got a black magic was like, oh, people our age grew up with the shoulder cam and all we wanted was to be able to point and shoot and have it look like a movie. Yeah. And like, we're now slowly it's... but surely that's exactly what's happening. It's just yeah. like, just get me like, damn, some of the stuff on an iPhone right now yeah, it's like, without holy shit. any kind of anything, Portrait without mode. filter, without really anything. Really good camera. Just yeah. incredible what you have on your pocket. I know how foggy I sound right now, but that's, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's really true. crazy. No, it's true. I was make, I've been doing my audition videos w using my iPhone and yeah. just even with the regular setting, it's a really high quality, but you can just yeah. really crank it up to a 4K and it, it might even be higher than that, especially with these new fangled iPhones. I know. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. I got yeah, twelve Ks. I just really, watched like um, uh, bonus features on a Blu-ray where, uh, because of COVID, they shot all the interviews on people's phones, and I was like, oh, okay, uh, that's like the like the footage is is high quality enough now that it could be used as part of like you know uh, EPK. So yeah, yeah like uh, and what's that movie? I always forget the name. It's Unsane, right? That was shot yeah, on the yeah, iPhone. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's like that's, um, Soderbergh. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I, that's the example I always think of. But I mean, I would even I, love to shoot Tangerine, something on an iPhone. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, and, that's um, the other one. I think I read this is so inconsequential, but there's like the uh, Wolf of Wall Street. There are certain shots that they got with an iPhone, and that was the first time they were like, "Oh, okay. oh you can just like use an iPhone." It was for like B roll that's or awesome. something like that. But it was like, "Let me just use my iPhone." And Scorsese is like, "Oh, okay, like, mm -hmm. fine." <laughs> and, and there's there's plenty of action films out there that will get a whole bunch of Black Magic pocket cinema cameras, or, or or the ones that I have, like the OG cinema or the right. OG pocket, which I think you you shot scrapers on, right? Yeah. And then yeah. we shot Grand Guignol on on, right. on uh, the pocket, which is so funny because it's it's tiny. It's just like this big, and you're like, yeah. you're like, what the hell is that? You it's throw genuinely on the size lens. of this. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. Is. It's, it's it is. It's thicker. It's like you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a little. Yeah, thicker, just a little bit. Genuinely, yeah. this size is crazy. Yeah. It looks like an yeah. old digital it's camera. Little, yeah. Yeah. And so then the when you, if you put a it. '70s lens on it, it's just like, yeah, yeah, ain't nothing. They're awesome. And the, the the newest the newer version of that camera is just I mean it's bigger but it's not it, you know crazy big um you know it's still probably it's probably like that big. Do you remember so. the original shape of it? Do you remember like the original prism shape of like before it was a pocket when they first released the Black Magic cam? Mm -hmm. uh, oh Dude, yeah yeah like oh, how yeah. crazy it was just oh, like yeah. this crazy kind of modern. That's yeah, what we shot like, void on. Yeah. It's like oh, really? it kind of reminds you of like yeah. the Mac a little bit. The first time you saw like a MacBook, like the, the cleaner space age design, yeah. where you're like, oh shit. Yeah, Everything is like kind of like perfectly designed and aesthetically pleasing, as well as like when you hold it, it just feels like it was awesome. I remember holding that thing and being super impressed with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, I was just gonna go off on uh tech some more, but yeah. I wanted to <laughs> mention that. <laughs> so but with uh with the the music stuff though, I I mean uh I do demos on my phone with either uh uh Garage Band, or I've used Fruity Loops, and so there's like a, a version of FL Studio for for iOS that you can use, and I'll do the initial demos on there, and then I have, um, you know, like if if someone skateboards for a certain company, how they get sponsored, I feel like I should be sponsored by Garage Band at this point because I've really just gone <laughs> up, like all in on that program and learned like all the ins and outs of how to EQ and master and stuff, and like it's a lot more of a nuanced program than I think people give it credit for because it's well, just cool. as out of the box, you know, but like certainly there's better programs out there. Even FL studio has more options and stuff, but um, I just like it. It's really easy. It's the same reason I like editing on final cut still. And Kevin's always giving me a hard time, but it's like, it, it just works, you know, as opposed yeah. to uh, Adobe or pre yeah, I mean, like I, yeah. I can use premiere, but there's a bit of a learning curve for me as far as all that stuff goes. Dude, if it goes premiere final cut and then whatever it is I use down here, I use uh, a <laughs> cyber link, like power director or something oh, okay. like that, but it, I gets, use shortcut. I don't even think that it's in the frame. Gets the job <laughs> done. Way down. Takes care of business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, you do. I dropped now, Adobe right? a while. Yeah. I dropped Ooh. Adobe a while ago because my <laughs> camera came with a full license. Of, well, that's the other cool thing. Like you can right. buy a thousand, dollar camera and it comes with a full editing suite which davinci yeah, is amazing. like the number one coloring uh program and then their their editing is it's not that bad so okay. i switched i will say though it's, it's exciting I didn't have to pay the, yeah. oh go ahead i'm sorry man i because I, I don't have to pay the adobe you know monthly fee like 60 bucks or whatever it the is cloud. Yeah, it's bullshit. yeah i'm like no Just a one off that. and you got it yeah. okay yeah. but it also but comes back to uh what you were saying before when you were the uh, let's all go to the lobby, you know, just try, 
shoot for simplicity and use the tools yeah. that you have and it's yeah. it works really well it's you know very effective mm -hmm. But it's exciting working with Kevin because he's always, I feel like he's kind of always on the cutting edge of what's coming out with technology and everything. And like, I remember, uh, like he's like, Oh, have you heard of magic bullet? It's this amazing color programming, uh, software. Oh, and so then, long ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it time stamps that comment. Um, no. but like, I mean, I, I, when we first started working together, you were using like the 5d, right? DSLR. No, no, I have the T2I, the, the okay, T2I. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, I mean, I still have, like, that's my, that's my camera that I, I kind of like the most. Camera, yeah. Like if, if someone has like a, a five or seven D that they want to let go of at a reasonable price, <laughs> uh, message me, I'll buy it from you. Into the void films. You yeah, exactly. <laughs> we them. I don't even know what they're on now. Like we've been just done using Kev's black magic stuff. That's kind of only what I've been paying attention to as well. But like, yeah, just to, to wax your car some more, Kev, he taught me how to shoot. You know, like I, I learned basic things in film school and on my own from watching movies, but he's the guy that I call if I'm working on a commercial and he's not there. And I'm like, hey, what are the camera settings? I don't remember any of this. <laughs> he's, he's, he helps me out and he's taught me a lot. And um, so I'm really appreciative of that. And over the years, like the, the lines between like positions have kind of blurred more. So now I kind of like see it like we both kind of direct and produce and then he'll do more of the camera and I'll do more of like the music. Yeah. Um, but well, actually, like, if you noticed in torture, we, I think it was torture was the first film where we're like, I'm, I'm not putting my name nine times in the credits for yeah, like or whatever. So it's just, now it's, it's like, just now from now on, it's just, you know, by Nate and KR, like that's all it is. Good, like, man. yeah, you know, so. Yeah, and I'm not like precious about the auteur theory about like, oh, it has to be a Nathan Waters movie. It's like, nah, dude, like we made it together and we're a team and Into the Void is like a, is, is a team. So it's, yeah. it's more like um, Tenacious D brings you this movie or it's like they, they present <laughs> themselves as like a group, right? Sure. Not to oh, say that we're Tenacious D in any way, but. Uh, pretty close. Um, <laughs> our overlapping circles. <laughs> we are just a tribute. <laughs> uh kevin so what do you have your eye on right now toy wise like what if you're on the forefront of toys what is the thing that you're like waiting like is this close to being attainable or like is the thing that everyone is about to want is that too broad of a question <laughs> i don't know um like i said i just like completed my my setup so that's hard to for me to answer like but like what so if i if you would have asked me like a year ago, right. I would have been like, I need a wireless follow focus. I need a, a director's monitor, but now I have all that. So I'm like, well, cool. <laughs> um, so you got I mean, a video I, 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 and all that. Oh yeah. I mean like a, like a very simple version of one. Um, right. but yeah. Um, so we've got like the transmitter and the receiver and everything. So it, that is super helpful, especially with like black magic when the screen is affixed to the back of the camera and I can't move yeah. it or angle it um so that's that's super helpful for nate like here here get away from me and take this yeah, you of me <laughs> being over your shoulder. But, like stop that, breathing on me like, i don't know if you ever saw that but it's like one of his uh newer uh, pieces of gear it's so nice like we all just get video village on our phones so oh, it's like great. we all can literally just sit there and watch it from our phones and not have to what be a time to be around. alive guys it's pretty insane right. and insane. so and, and that thing is like 150 bucks or something like, really is this it? <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Jack's been waiting to show this picture. I've really the oh, yeah. entire show. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be sweet when I get to click this button. Yes, <laughs> it's a very serious great, great expression picture. on my face there. Jack, it's do you from, have any questions uh, about this? Question? No, I just <laughs> like the the shot. Well, yeah, the context of what's going on. I only sort of know just because we briefly talked about it beforehand. Uh -huh. But well, we are in a bowling alley. Yes. Yeah, it's from a, a feature we worked on, and uh, I was the AD, and Kev was uh, one of the, or you were the cinematographer on it, right? No, no, I or, was. No, um, okay. Well, I started off as uh, I can't remember exactly. It was like Gaffer oh, yeah, or something, and then it was first AC, I think it was. That's right. Um, but but this was a feature film uh, called Every Twenty One Seconds. Um, okay. Our friend, uh, our friends, Shannon Brown. Um, and Suzette Brown brought us onto the project, and it was, I think it was my, my actually my first feature film. Oh. Um, but anyway, there's a scene at a bowling alley, 
And we're like, well, we need a shot of the, the main character throwing the ball. So we're like, well, let's just, you know, set up in the middle of the lane and, and we'll, we'll just catch the ball. So the idea was to throw it like such a good a idea. Slower, yeah. To, to throw it at a slower speed. Now that camera is the black magic Ursa mini pro. Oh my God. So uh -huh. with a, uh, that's the Sigma. It's either the 18, it's looks bigger. So it's the 50 to a hundred. So it's a, that's a decently expensive setup right there <laughs> and because i think and then there's a bowling like, ball coming at it yeah yeah so we're, <laughs> we're over really there smart. like i'll catch it <laughs> like, well, it's yeah, fine it's it. fine <laughs> it's it, still good it's still so good. so the the uh, lead actor shannon he throws the ball and it it went right <laughs> right at the camera <laughs> I remember putting out my hand and everyone's putting out their hands to stop it from slamming into the lens. And I, I, and we, def we did deflect it. Thank God. Um, <laughs> it was close though. It was really yeah. close. It was, was really close. It, it was a dumb move, but I think the shot may, I think it's in the film actually. So I sure hope so. It had know. better be I'm, in the film. Yeah. I'm pretty it better sure. It be. is. Yeah. It's yeah. like one of those shots where it's like, why? It, it, you put that <laughs> I don't care movie. if this works or if there's or tech not. gear in the background. <laughs> we're putting it in the movie. There's going to be yeah. a random insert of a bowling ball rolling down. Like if they cut the bowling scene completely from the movie, put that shit in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it better be in the trailer. God damn it. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was I thought about you guys earlier because I was um, surfing on my Amazon Prime app and I saw that Shannon Brown had like has a ton of movies on there. Yeah. Oh yeah, was, he's just oh, all yeah. up on there. And I, I was like, he's always working yeah, on something. It's crazy. It something that was free. One of these movies, and I was like, Shannon, I know that. I I feel <laughs> like I know that name, and then I saw his his mug right there. So um, uh, Shannon yeah, is in Grand Guignol. We'll have him next week. We'll have yeah, him yeah, in, uh, for sure. In the short. He's, a lot He's been fun. in a bunch of our stuff over the years. Writer's block, void. Even though oh, in void we did, we put a potato sack over his head and no one saw his face. <laughs> He's so, a pro. Uh, He's a professional. Yeah, is what, yeah. Is what we're trying to say. I, I mean, um, I remember he showed up when we shot that and like hadn't slept because he just got back from another shoot. He was just, like, a different shoot. Like, he like, drove all the way to Wisconsin. <laughs> he was like, "I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take like a one hour power nap." And then we're going to film all night. And I like made him coffee and stuff. And that was kind of like my first time hanging out with him was being like, we're so fucking sorry. We're having you come all the way out here. And he was just like, it's cool, man. It's cool. <laughs> uh, have you heard from him lately? What's he been up to? Just working, ma making movies. Still I think they're, they're yeah. doing a feature, right? He's missing this a lot of sleep. Yeah, right. Yeah, that. Yeah, not sleeping a lot. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'd yeah, like they're to. Not, they're constantly cranking them up. That's great. Uh, Catch yeah. up with him soon, see what he's up to, you know. But yeah. I, I know he's they're on a feature right now, so we wish him the best with it. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, well, it well, I don't know how we made it this far without talking about your podcast, but we should talk about your podcast. Uh, sure. yeah, it's called maybe. Those Who Remain. Uh, tell how did that get started and what is it? It's a horror podcast. Oh, this is Kevin for sure because it's his uh idea. Cool, you know, we um. Nate and I had always wanted to do a podcast, but I don't know. I don't know why we never got around to doing one, but essentially how it happened is I got brought onto a friend's podcast and it was during like the pandemic <laughs> and they were like, okay, yeah, we just do it from our own home. We do it on zoom and, and, you know, we talk for an hour or whatever. And, and that's it. I'm like, Oh, okay. So I hopped on and it was the easiest thing in the world. And I'm like, and I, I, I think I texted Nate right after that. I'm like, dude, I just got off of this podcast. We did it all over Zoom. I'm like, <laughs> we can do this. Like, this is we can totally do this. And you know, we like, you know, we're horror people, so we're like, let's let's just review fun movies. We'll review new stuff. We'll review old stuff, crazy stuff, whatever. We can. It's our show. We can do whatever we want. So, so it was kind of a combination of that and. Um, talking about ghost stories and then creepy paranormal experiences and putting together some really cool, what we like to call radio plays. And yeah. um, so, so that's what, uh, that's what we've been doing. We've uh, got 20 episodes out in our first season, which was crazy. And a lot of them are over an hour long. Some are close to two hours or over two yeah. hours <laughs> um, and season. And season two, 
drops tomorrow. So, tomorrow? Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, we're covering uh, 13 Ghosts, the uh, remake yep. from 2001. Nice. Tony I think Shalhoub, Jones, right? Yep. Yep. Bones yep. going to be very happy to hear that. I, yep. Uh, <laughs> we love that movie. So we're like <laughs> trying to, we're, we're debating on what to do. And uh, we're like, we're going to do, uh, oh, thank you. I think Kevin oh, does. Man. I think Kevin has a lovely voice for a podcast. I think I'm like, hey, everybody, we're going to do 13 Ghosts. Uh, 13 Ghosts, yeah. That's a great movie. <laughs> Best movie ever. Um, but yeah, 13, uh, we were going to do Willy's Wonderland originally. And then Kevin's like, no, they get that, that movie's all like fine and well and everything, but we got to do something that kind of holds a special place in our heart. And we both kind of grew up with that movie at a certain time in our childhoods where it freaked us out, you know, and it was uh, a dark castle film. Man. Yeah. That whole dark oh, castle yeah. era that kicked off. Like, I guess you'd say like the, the 2000 American remake cycle, you know? Gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, so. I don't know. I had to leave for a second because yeah, lion had to <laughs> go use the restroom. Yeah, I was wondering uh, so that's why I, that's why I disappeared. I don't know if you guys said this when I walked away, but I was lucky enough to be on your show we talked mm-hmm. about uh, Ari Aster, Midsummer, and uh, Hereditary. Hereditary for yeah. a long time. It was a, a long it was a time. Yeah, that was one of our longer ones, but it's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> I think it is the longest one, yeah. Yeah. I but, can uh, it's, great. We, 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 we totally go full circle, and on 13 Ghosts, we we put out the question of what if Ari Aster did a remake of 13 ghosts. Oh and then God. like, we're, we're just like, he would never touch that fucking movie <laughs> with a, with a 13 foot pole. But like, He's you so know, funny. it's fun to wonder about anyway, which is kind of like, that's the fun of a, a podcast is it's you, it's you and your friend and you're kind of just, you know, and some other people too. And you guys are just throwing stuff in the air and seeing, you know, what everyone gravitates towards. Um, um, but it's, it's a, it's a lot of work doing these shows as I'm sure you both, you know, totally yeah. know, but know. it's yeah. like, it's like a part-time, sometimes full-time, a little bit into full-time hours, but mostly part-time. It, to be halfway good. Yeah. Yeah, it, it could be it, whatever hours you really want it to be, you know, but uh, <laughs> like doing like the music, doing scheduling stuff with other guests, uh, it takes time. It's just, just the nature of, you know, how it works and, uh, totally. it, but it's, it's so much fun and it's such a good outlet, especially during uh, quarantine when it's like, you can't shoot anything really i know other people did but we didn't feel comfortable doing so so we just decided to do something like this right on i um that is something to to touch on is um now that things are opening up that's all well and good but i it was really hard to hear about anyone trying to make an independent film during quarantine um especially like if you're going to be an independent film doing it you need to have like serious cash you need mm-hmm. to have like serious, serious cash to make that set um, safe. So I'll I don't say, know if you have anything to say about it, but on the record, thank you guys for not shooting during quarantine because I really oh, sure. I like to I like to call that out when I see it. Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I was I, on Facebook seeing that shit, people asking yeah. about sound mixers and stuff, and I was like, get out of here! Like, yeah. go, go sleep, go read a book. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's it's hard too because it's like you know that's their day job and stuff so they're like what do i do and it's like but like we just didn't feel comfortable doing it and it's like especially what we're doing it's like we're not making money off this stuff we're just doing it as you know our passion project so it's it's, we're like let's take this time and i wrote a bunch i wrote you know like four five features or something like that yeah (laughs) and i'm trying to send them to to some yeah i'm just trying to do something you know like uh uh trying to send them to some script contests and having other people read my scripts for kind of the first time in my life. Um, working on having Jake do a dialogue polish on one of my, uh, one of our scripts that we've been really excited rolling around. I'm stoked on that one. That was one of those ones that you kind of gave me the push into the pool on. So I'm excited to pull you into the pool with me on You're the crazy. rewrites. <laughs> I have, um, Nate is fun because he's one of the few people like I, you did ninja training with me and I don't talk about ninja training that much, but like there was one year where I said, I'm going to write a script. I'm going to do my best to write a feature script once a month, like a new one every month. And Nate was right there next to me doing it. So I think I, I think I landed on six that year or something like that. And Nate, Ended like up writing two, like four maybe, or something. I don't know. Two or but three. Uh, but it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't at that level. It was level. still more than either of us had ever written at that time. Yeah. We were just like, let's like just 
let's do it. And it kind of goes back to what we were saying at the beginning, you know, uh, the movie theater and a film set are similar in the sense of like, you're going to be standing around for eight hours. So the best thing you can do is figure out how to, you know, chill. <laughs> don't be, you know, don't be an asshole on set. Don't be, you know, mm -hmm. like the best thing you can do on one of those shifts was just like, okay, well, let's, let me get to know you. And Nate and I wrote so much together. And then um, I have a whole feature script that is starring Nate and Kevin. Like I wrote a whole dog movie cage, right? dog cage that <laughs> Nate helped me write the story for. And I genuinely have 90 pages where it's Nate and Kevin in a mockumentary um, playing ourselves, playing themselves, getting final tap meets pages. man bites dog. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Something like some weird mixture of those two movies. <laughs> That is one of my dream, that's one of my dream things, but it was a one lot day. of fun writing that because um, the dialogue came easy just because I saw your faces. You know, I got to pretend mm -hmm. like it was you and um, it's just not yeah. a usual thing to get to do, you know? And I don't, those are the two horror things I've written is because of you, you know? Like I don't write horror, but it's like, oh, well, we'll write a Hellraiser script and <laughs> let's do Dog Cage. Cause I, Dog Cage was because I was like, why there's, all, there's no female Freddies. That's all. Yeah. I want a female Freddy. And Dog Cage is my female Freddy. She's mm -hmm. a badass. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> we'll I, would love, I would love to see that get made someday. And even someday. if it even if it didn't, like if we're too old and crusty to be in the movie at some point, let's get some young guys to play us or play yeah, versions definitely. based on us or something. You know. I'm um, so 100 percent down. I'll, we'll get there. We just need to find 10 guys willing to get halfway naked and into Dog Cage. <laughs> that is what that movie is. <laughs> That's <laughs> all you need. Genuinely, give me a warehouse. Get me twelve men in their tidy whities and twelve dog cages. I well, if you saw <laughs> Human Centipede too, that's the whole movie is a twelve-person yeah. long centipede. There's people out there that'll do it. You know my inspirations, Nate. You know oh everything that I love. You it's know, I wish I could say this. Like, nice reference. <laughs> I wish I could say this is the first time this week that that movie has come up in conversation. No. Like that one specifically. <laughs> yes, actually. That one, one I remember specifically. He, he was like, I'm going to do it in black and white. So it's like an art picture. And, and it's like, no, sure you're just is. doing that so you can get around the ratings board. Because it's <laughs> apparently right. less gruesome if it's in black the and white. Blood, the blood isn't red, right? Is right. that all? Like, pretty much like you get to use chocolate syrup. It, and, it's yeah. the difference between an R rating and an X rating. Just <laughs> chocolate <laughs> syrup. Well, I'm glad I could be the second person to bring up that movie because I haven't thought about it since it came out. <laughs> I don't know if I should say thank you or you're welcome. Yeah, both. Thank you and you're welcome. <laughs> um, all right. I, you know, fellas, I could talk to you guys forever. This is so easy. I got a million questions still. Um, first, where can we find your podcast? On the website or is it on Apple, like SoundCloud? What's, what, where can we find your beautiful? Yeah, those you can. Videos? Yeah, you can find those who remain on on any uh, Apple, uh, Spotify. Uh, we we use a cool little program called or uh, platform called Anchor, and it kind of pushes it out to everywhere. Um, so, or you can go to IntoTheVoidFilms.net, and there's a page dedicated to our podcast on there too. So, mm -hmm. cool. plenty of places to find it. That's great. Um... So here's the penultimate question before I uh, have Jack ask the ultimate question, as we do here. Uh, penultimate question is, what is the next project and when is it happening? And tell me, tell us all about it. Sure. Uh, so besides the second season of the podcast dropping tomorrow, we got a uh, radio play coming out based on uh, the 2018 uh, PlayStation 4 game, God of War. So it's really? like, yeah, it's like this whole scene from the beginning of the movie where we uh, got our uh, amazingly talented friends, Connor and Sheila to come in and voice the characters Atreus and Balder. And we got Kevin doing Kratos and I'm doing the narration. And like, really? I adapted this, the script and stuff uh, that we used. You and then did. after that, we're doing, we're doing a short called beloved, which is, um, it's just a, a short little uh, witch based, uh, I guess you'd say period piece, although we don't specifically say the, the year, mm -hmm. but it's like a, just a, a kind of real tiny little Halloween short film that we're going to be shooting in the next month. Wonderful. Where are you shooting that? Uh, in the Chicago area. In the oh. woods. <laughs> in the woods. The undisclosed woods. The, the woods of Chicago. Woods. Yep. City yeah. woods or suburb woods? This would we technically the be city woods. 
<laughs> you plead the fifth. I like that answer. I like that answer. It's one of my favorite ones to give. Um, Nate's worried we're going to get busted. We'll be. That's, I know that's, listen, that, that's that's my AD uh, uh, experience Nate? is always being like. <laughs> I'm just like, we'll be fine. Yeah, we done, done. Big bushy beard, and Kevin, you are eight feet tall. You cannot yeah. pretend to Close be to students anymore. That's the yeah. thing. There's only <laughs> so I much. You're like, like yeah, I'm I still got my Columbia. I, I still have my ID. So, yeah, yeah, maybe of life. What, what, are, what are permits? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so. Oh my God, no. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah. No, no I, I did that once. I might have burned, burned that one up. <laughs> so yeah, we're doing that one. We're but we're it's, That's it's a Chicago too, <laughs> like a rite of passage for a Chicago yeah. filmmaker. Oh, have we're a student. Up, we're student. Have you looked up how much fucking permits are, man? It's like <laughs> pro prohibitively expensive, especially if it's like you're just shooting for like two hours. It's like I fuck know, that, right? Man. So managed to get some shots of Millennium Park somehow. They were they were very kind. They were very kind. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But yeah, we're excited about that. And uh, after that, we're just going to try to keep working on these scripts and sending them out to contests and see how the rest of the year works out with that. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, looking forward to hearing more about that. Thank you. Wonderful. Jack, hit us. What are you guys watching? Ooh, Kevin. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so this will actually be on our podcast, but we're we're watching Fear Street on Netflix. Yeah, uh, which is a specific one. We're gonna do we'll, all three. We'll do, yeah, we're gonna do all three. So I've only seen the first one so far. Uh, the second one's on my list, but trying to find time right now is is uh, a little hard. But so that's what we've been watching. And uh, my throwback that I'm watching right now is. Stargate SG One. Nice. <laughs> so yeah. Yuck. Yeah. How many episodes of Stargate do you have to watch minimum? Oh God. Um, I would <laughs> like say, if you um, turn it on, how many are you going to watch? Oh, like in one sitting? I'm not allowed to watch Star Trek during the afternoon because if I turn it on in the afternoon, I won't turn it off. Okay. You understand? Oh, yeah. Like I tell yeah. myself, like only Star Trek after nine p.m. That's like the hard it, rule. <laughs> it, it depends on if like it's a continuation episode or not. If it's like a filler episode, I could do just one. Okay. But yeah. if it's like a par like a two parter or a three parter, I kind of gotta watch. <laughs> got you hooked. <laughs> got you. I'm yeah. you watching Stargate makes me want to watch Stargate. I'm very curious about it, but me I'm also too. like. There's a part of me that wants to get into that and a part of me that wants to get into X-Files. And I'm like, I ain't got time. Ooh. I cannot. Yeah, yeah, maybe I, I don't know. It's like those are some serious, serious like investments to actually do it. So yeah. I mean, I Stargate is 10 seasons and 20 to 23 episodes a season and 45 mm -hmm. minute episodes. So it's, uh, it's a lot. Maybe I'll uh, stop watching. X-Files is similar. To yeah, yeah, right. Dimensions. Yeah. Yep. It's like a big time investment. Mm -hmm. oh, I keep watching the same stuff over and over and over again. So maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try <laughs> something new. Who knows? What about you, Nate? Uh, I watched the first Fear Street. I haven't seen the second one yet. Um, Is the third one out yet? Do we know? Th th this Friday. Tomorrow. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. That's so cool that they did that. Good for them. It's, it's um, a cool concept, yeah. I think so. Um, but uh, other than that, I actually just rewatched Tiger King. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, rewatch of Tiger yeah, I know because I'm working on a script Ooh, that is basically it's basically Tiger King, but in the world of like uh, kind of like uh, redneck independent haunted houses. So like that's that's what I'm working on. So I, I wanted to rewatch Tiger King, kind of structurally good. pick it pick it apart and see kind of how it works on a on a structural level, right? But like that is just such a crazy. Such a crazy series to watch, Doctor Who. There you go. Bones have been trying I've to get got the I've got the TARDIS Who. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's like it's some, you it's don't have to watch all of it. You just have to watch the last ten years of it. Oh, <laughs> is that all? all right. <laughs> no, you don't have to worry about the old stuff. It's just and the last else? like 10, fifteen I'm trying years. To think. There's there's a lot of um, there's so much like uh, new stuff that's good. But I've been yeah. going back and and like watching older stuff. Like Amy was like, you you never watched Arrested Development? We're watching that. Uh, so Batman. we've been like. That's a good one. through that, and I love that show. It's hilarious. that's a great first watch. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm missing out on stuff, and like uh, the writing's so good. It's like um, I miss out on Frasier until I until I moved in with her, and she's like, <laughs> Frasier is hilarious, and so I've been catching up on that. It's good because it's an extension of Cheers. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, and like that's just the cherry yeah, on top, right? 
Yeah. Right. I remember yeah. being messed up at like two in the morning and I was talking to a friend and I was like, sometimes you just got to watch Frasier. And that friend <laughs> used to quote that to me all the time <laughs> after that. Sometimes just you just got to watch truth. a little Frasier. So <laughs> funny. Same with oh. Cheers though. Like just rewatch. I introduced somebody to Cheers who had never really watched it. Oh man. And what like rewatching it since I was a kid, I was like, Oh my God! The writing on this show is like way yeah. better than I thought it was. Like it's you next level. Well, it's just because you're older, you understand it more. Exactly. It's just like every time I go back to that stuff, it's like either like Thirteen Ghosts, bad example of going back to a movie because it didn't <laughs> hold up as well. But something like that would be a good example where you appreciate right. it more. I um, talk about I, um, Big all the time. Watch it. Oh, okay. I used to watch Big all the time as a little kid, and then rewatching it as a thirty-year-old, I was like, "This is a totally different movie. This movie is completely <laughs> different. What is going well, on?" Someone was talking about Scream the other day, and they're like, "Scream hits different as a parent because when you're a teenager, you're like, shit, this would be scary to be a teenager at a party. When you're an adult, you're like, how awful would that phone call from the police be after your kid get <laughs> oh. killed?" And I'm just like, "That's crazy." Horror but it's true. Not fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like some certain aspects about horror movies kind of like lose their like. I guess you get a little softer uh, with those life experiences because you're just like, oh, that sucks. Well, I don't want to yeah, watching about that. Watching Hereditary like that. Yeah, like, oh, that gross. last time I watched yeah. it, I was like, yeah. man, this movie messed me up. Yeah, yeah. like so, when you um, start. I started this film wanting to do a, a family like melodrama, and I turned it into this family just horror torture show. And, yeah, uh, it's so bizarre. It like, you know, <laughs> it's crazy nightmare, like do, 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 hitting her head on the. Oh, oh god, amazing. making me want to rewatch it. And we're um, gonna go back in the time machine to our episode. <laughs> that's a good idea. I'll post that. I'll post the episode on um, Facebook. I should have done that before, but uh, you can listen to us do that. Um, Jack, what you watching? Fella? I watched the complete opposite of everything we have talked about this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Stranger than fiction. Which oh, I had I never, I had never Chicago. seen it before. Chicago and Chicago as hell. Yeah. When when Chris Ray was on the show, the, I was watching mm -hmm. some interviews with her, and uh, she was doing one where she was talking about Unexpected, and uh, had this joke where she's like, "Oh, I wanted to thank our co-star of the film, Chicago," and she references Stranger Than Fiction. It's like there's so much Chicago in yeah. this movie; it's ridiculous. Don't they have like an office in the Wrigley Building? Like yeah. they're in the Wrigley building, like as if anyone would actually have like a publisher's <laughs> office there. But yeah, it's a great shot. It's, it's, it's a really great shot. They and a lot of it downtown. Yeah, I think. And it made me, uh, so I live in New York city and, uh, I, since I've only been to Chicago once to visit you, Jake, um, uh, my knowledge of Chicago geography is, I can't even speak of that, but, uh -huh. um, I'm wondering if they do this thing where, you know, you see movies that are set in New York. Well, every movie is set in New York. But they always do this thing where it's like, we're on this side of town, on the Upper West Side. And now, five minutes later, we're on the Lower East Side. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure that that happens left, right, and center in, in this particular movie. It's like, oh, <laughs> how the fuck did we get all the way over here? What? How did... There's traffic. I don't care if That's, you're taking a train, a bus, or a car. Um, one of the funniest things about clean sheets is that if you actually know the geography of Chicago, it's so impossible. Every single thing. <laughs> they go from Rogers Park to the South Loop to Rogers Park to the South Loop like and, three times. And they and talk like, about it's like it's just two blocks from It ain't here. nothing. Just yeah. take LSD and it's fine. You know? We're going to walk over like, there. Yeah, I, that's, right. I did it on purpose because I wanted it to be never ending. But the first time I showed it to Hillary, <laughs> she was like, uh, she's like, yeah, people no. in Chicago are kind of like, uh, I'm like, I, it's, What's that, um, it's a stylistic choice. I it promise. doesn't matter it's if you're not from impossible. here, you won't know. Uh, yeah, it's like, I, I, than, like, oh, sorry, I saw a movie where like it was set in Chicago, and someone instead of saying Lower Wacker Drive, they said Lower Wacker Street or something like that. And people <laughs> in the audience got mad, like, they got pissed <laughs> off. Some guy was like, the fuck this movie Ooh. come on you know yeah, people, people I, get really get that right. that, so. I saw parasite in um evanston and there's a part where they're like tell them that you're uh visiting your cousin in chicago and yeah. the entire audience was like oh that's so great that's so great uh, <laughs> I, got that no, I agree with you nate like if you're gonna like name drop geography that's so close yeah. it just takes that much more effort to just get the yep. name right yeah, <laughs> like, you 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 did it. You're in it that far. Why did you have to divert at the end? Right. Way to but stick like, the you know, landing. 
uh, which is it? What Jason movie is it where he goes to Manhattan? Or it's supposed to be Jason goes to Manhattan, but uh, he spends like seventy five percent of the movie on a cruise ship because they couldn't afford to go to Manhattan. <laughs> so they they went to they went to Manhattan for like a day and got yeah. all the major like here's you know, the Empire inserts. State Building. Yeah, here's yeah. Jason standing in you know like in front of people <laughs> and stuff. And then like and then the rest of the movie they shot in Canada. In yeah. alleys, and they just fake it. That's what I was so gonna like, say. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Toronto. They always use Toronto. Vancouver or Toronto. That's yeah. New York. Yep. <laughs> in Tommy Boy, I think New York is Toronto, and it's like that's <laughs> not New York, you funny boys <laughs> yeah. doing They're skylines. Like, no one will that. notice. In, in <laughs> Fast and Furious Eight, it's New York. Uh, really? Which they use for a couple of shots. They're shooting in Prague, like, though, and they they're shooting pretend. in Prague <laughs> and Vancouver and Toronto. I was like, "What? <laughs> Where is this street?" Right. New York's That's why Chicago people movie. hold those um, those Batman movies are very close to everybody's heart because mm -hmm. we were all in college during the Dark Knight, yeah. and like they kept sh Chicago for a lot of people is Gotham. Like no matter yeah. what, it's yeah, Chicago is very totally. Gotham. Um, we got very far away from the movie, though. Did you enjoy the film, Stranger Than Fiction? Very much. I've, I've only yeah, seen sorry. it once, and I need to watch it again. It, it was it delightful. Theater. Oh, I'm it glad was, you liked it. It was so much fun. It made me cry at a number oh, of good. parts. Good. And, and I really needed to see a movie like that. You needed um, to see Will Ferrell play Reckless Eric on acoustic guitar. I did need to see Will Ferrell play Reckless Eric on guitar. I like that song. <laughs> it's a great it's song. It's a very simple song. But no, it's a great movie because every... They just keep introducing all of these supporting roles. It's like this person's in this movie. This person's in this. What? Holy shit! Even uh -huh. Tom Holt, 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 Holt. I always get his name wrong. But Tom Pinto, Holtz? Tom Holt, Pinto from, from yeah. Animal House Amadeus. and Amadeus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, They're that's great. The greatest Amadeus. So good. <laughs> he's nice. He's so good in that. But I yeah, he's it. got a cameo in this. And I was like, holy shit! This is awesome. <laughs> I saw it in college when it first came out and I did not care for it. And that's so long ago that I have no opinion on it anymore. So maybe uh, it'll be one that I'm like, now that I'm older, like we were talking about uh -huh. mm, stranger than fiction. How did do you guys remember that flick? Yep. Uh, same, same thing it. as you, Jake. I, I, I've seen it a little more recently than, than you, but I need a refresher on it for sure. Yeah. I remember enjoying it at the time though. It was like one of those movies that I, uh, didn't get it to see in theater but i wanted to really badly but i missed it yeah same with me and i just like ev everything else just got in the way it's like oh yep. yeah here's this movie right um yeah there's a new trailer it reminded me of it because there's a trailer for this show called the shrink next door that's going to be on apple plus and it's um, Will Ferrell in a big bushy beard and Paul uh -huh. Rudd, and they both play like Long Island Jews or something like that. So that's going to be very interesting. But I thought of it because it's Will Ferrell doing a serious thing, oh, okay. which, yeah. which like yeah. works when it works for me. And uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this new thing. But um, yeah, I remember Stranger Than. I, I let's rewatch Stranger Than Fiction and have a conversation about it. There you go. Yeah. I'm down. There you go. We'll do hey. <laughs> what have you been watching? Uh, I woke up. This is uh, so random and niche today to find Bones watching the making of Jaws for nice. um, her own podcast. She has a podcast called Zombie Banana Spiders, a, another horror podcast. But it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, they talk about movies and books and comics and like everything under the sun um, in history. And it's just like this big cornucopia of uh, knowledge and stuff. And so their episode they were working on was like summer movies. So we watched a bunch of, we watched The Burning, which I have things to say about, um, learned about that, which is the first Miramax film. So the Weinsteins are just kind of that was all news to over me. it, all over it in 1981. It was a Friday the 13th kind of ripoff. Jason Alexander and Fisher Stevens are in it. There's wow. uh, Tom Savini did the makeup. Yep. Like there's so That's many the one with things. the hedge clippers, right? Yeah, and there's so many yeah. things going on with it. And then it's like screen story by Harvey Weinstein, screenplay by Bob <laughs> Weinstein. And it's like interesting. This is yeah. all it's all tainted. It's all interesting to watch. Mm. I wasn't gonna talk about that. That's why I brought up Jaws. Um <laughs> so I woke up this morning and she was watching the making of Jaws and caught myself watching the entire making of Jaws being like I didn't want to watch Jaws before this, and now I absolutely can't wait to watch it again. Because the whole thing is just not only is it 1975, which is just like mid 70s, early 70s, my favorite time period for film anyway, but it's mm -hmm. this whole like 
because everything was practical, the entire thing is problem solving. Just mm-hmm. every awful thing that could happen on a set with a halfway oh, decent yeah. amount of you know money and stuff like they were talking about how they had such little time that they didn't even test the damn shark in the water until they shipped it to <sighs> eat the East Coast. And it's like mm-hmm. you're crazy. But then yeah. I also learned that uh, it was because um, there was going to be an actor strike. So they had to get everything going in production before anything was finished. And I just had no idea oh, about man. any of it. So it's and fun. It's fun no watching to see saltwater shark and freshwater sharks and the thing rusted. Well, it's like you're uh, going to build a shark and you're not going to test it in the water before you mail perfect. it across the country. Are you crazy? The balls on them. They, there's no way they had time to test it. I just imagine like, so it, there's no way we're going to test this, dunk this thing in the water, mess it up, and then send it over. Like, if we're going to destroy this thing, we're going to destroy it over there, and then we can fix it over there or something like that. But yeah. um, a good rationale, I guess. Just so many. That's one way one of looking way. at it, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it's true. Just, that's interesting. I love it's one of those sayings, you know, you listen to any filmmaker talk about how, like, Oh, the less money you have, kind of the better the movie ends up being because you have to do all of this problem solving. Like we were talking about all, you know, you learn from the one thing and then every time you make something, there's something new. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Spielberg has not always had his shit together. He he tried. And it's funny too, because now that, you know, Jaws becomes the biggest movie in the whole wide world and it's been so popular for 50 years now, 40, 50 years now, that mm-hmm. everyone has been able to take the film and own the success of it, you know? So there are things that Spielberg is saying where he owns the success of it. And I'm like, I would love to talk to you in real time. I'd love to talk to you when you were making this thing and hear what you Uh actually thought, as opposed to like the story that crystallized since then, you know, he talks about the opening scene. Oh, well, if the jaw, if jaws just pops out of the water, that's just a monster movie. But if you make them scared of the water, then that's something really primal. And like, that's a beautiful thing to say. It's a beautiful, beautiful thought. But, Did you really think that at the yeah, time? Or were you like, guys, I want to have a monster pop out of the water. Yeah, no, he was probably like, word. Did you see the picture of that fucking shark they're building? Dude, <laughs> yeah. when it comes out of the water and gets you all <laughs> yeah. oh, it's man. gonna be amazing. How many of these yeah. stories oh, are yeah, just totally. justification for the shit that didn't work? And they would have made it pop out first thing if they had tested it in the water first, like I, I asked them just to wanted them to <laughs> test the damn thing. Yep. There would have been exactly. so much more shark. If they you gave me you. two months. I asked for eight. You gave yeah. me two. I mailed you the fucking shark. Uh, <laughs> fucking that's Lucas crazy. jumps into the thing's <laughs> mouth and wrecks the thing. So that's why I had to drag her under the water in the beginning. Well, isn't there yeah. a, a similar like, on the opposite end of that where like Spielberg on uh, Indiana Jones, there's a plane that was supposed to show up. And then when it showed up, it was way bigger. So he was like, oh, we got to shoot the scene and make it way bigger than it was. Or like something like that, where it's like he was that was kind of him kind of at a stride. Right. And kind of being able to take things in pocket and improvise. Whereas like Jaws is like he definitely made that work for him. But I think you're right that that's kind of like one of those things. It's like, guys, don't tell everyone that we fucked up because it's like he talks talks about waking up in panic attacks months after the movie was released. He would wake up after the movie is done already a success. He'd wake up and be like, it's day four of shooting. So, you know, the guy was just absolutely traumatized by making Mm -hmm. this movie and you're the director. So you got to pretend like everything's cool and you're making a shark movie and the shark doesn't work and you got to shoot out the actors. It sounds like a nightmare, but it also Mm -hmm. sounds like if you can get through this, then maybe you'll end up being Jaws, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. And because the shark didn't work, we got Bob, um, Bob, um, and it's like all that that POV stuff, and it's like yep. arguably Jaws would have just been another cheesy monster movie had we none of talking, that happened. So. Yeah, like you make Jaws now, even Spielberg himself would do CG for half. Of like, this stuff. like Meg, you right? Know? It's like no, oh, nothing yeah. wrong with right. Meg, but Meg's not a scary movie. It's a video game. It's right. like a right. big yeah. CG totally. shark. You know, it's fun. It's like Piranha yeah. three three D or whatever. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's just, but it's just like it's not doesn't work on that that primal level that Spielberg's sure. talking about. It's true. <laughs> like, I'm it's still, if, heart, I, man. if I go oh. into a pool to this day, even if it has chlorine and it's in a hotel and I close my eyes, I'll imagine a shark from Jaws. So it's like <laughs> that movie has has legs or fins, whatever you want to say. Gills. <laughs> yeah, gills. Well, 
on that note, boys, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you guys coming. This thank you so both. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Of course. Um, we, everyone should go to into the void films.net. Uh, we'll be showing, uh, their work next week, but also watch it at its highest resolution as Jack likes to remind us on their website and on YouTube. Um, and tomorrow season two of, tomorrow. Um, of right. uh, those who remain podcast synergy guys, this is synergy. This synergizing. Is synergy. It's what we it. like to do. Um, any final thoughts before we uh, say goodbye? Any of the three of you, Nate, Kevin, Jack. Ah. Uh... I just want to say thanks. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I want um, maybe I, I I regret that we weren't able to get into the whole Black Widow thing that much, but that's okay. We talked about. We'll it have before. you guys back, right? Yeah, we'll come, back. Want to come back. We'll come back. The, the the short of that is that the pandemic made things crazy with streaming movies. The window got real <laughs> short. It's crazy. It's 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 know, a whole right? new era. That's the, like yeah. really the long and short of it. Right. But yeah, thank both you guys so much. I love the show. I love being able to be a part of it in any way I can. Thanks, so. buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, doing things like this, um, really let, you know, like people like us, like it, it, creative people just, or just people who like to talk, like it gives us something to do and it's cool to create content and, and get something out in a time where we couldn't before. And mm -hmm. thankfully now we can, and we're, we're, we're going out and doing it. So, you know, just thank you guys. Uh, your show's great. Um, so everyone, you know, like them and, and whatever you <laughs> probably got that 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 spiel at the end like we do for ours but <laughs> well, you know. I, I really appreciate you guys coming on the show uh jack thank you so much buddy but of course um, uh you mentioned this before but just a quick reminder of who we got on the show next week you know what we're doing film stuff so far volume oh, yeah. three yeah nice. i was kind of I was wobbling back and forth, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to watch some trailers from Chris Ray. We're going to watch some shorts from Into the Void. Who else? We got so many people. We got um, art videos from Hillary Bones. Um, uh, we got, uh, oh, my God, we'll get some bad movie brunch people. I feel like I'm missing somebody. Matt Gossin. We'll figure out something for Matt Gossin. Maybe we can find a cartoon or something like that. Or uh, very nice. We'll see, because that's all copyrighted stuff. We can't be showing Talking Tom here. Uh, with 125 million people watching that cartoon. Well, so. just get <laughs> just the line in front of the camera and we'll do the voices in the background. You know what? We'll get Matt and we'll all do it. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do like puppet theater talking Tom or something like Brilliant. that. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Definitely go to jellyrollchicago.com and watch. look out for the videos that we upload. And we're here every single Thursday. Thank you, everyone, so, so much. Jack, I will see you next week. And I will see you in the future. What's that billowing down the stairs? Look, I'm really starting to worry. There's half-eaten cupcakes everywhere. We're all out of paper clips. And the curtains smell like dude. Shoot them all and let God sort them out. That's like Willie for you, always with the smooth talk. Well, that's where I used to grow my weed. But that's a story for another day. Never mind, never mind. We drove around until 3 a.m. looking for another all-you-can-eat fish restaurant. And when you couldn't find one? We went fishing. <laughs> yes, I have something that I'd like to sell. Please tell me it's your hair. <laughs> no!